Talk Radio will actually educate, inspire, and make you think. The future is now. Topics and music that affect your life from Universal Broadcasting Network. Tune in at UBNRadio.com. Are you ready for our radio show? No, but it's customary that I put on lipstick at the top of the show. It is, because it's radio, and it's always important that we look good <laughs> all the time. Although, can I say, one of our guests, who we will introduce in a moment, thought this was just radio, and I neglected to tell her there was a camera, and she's a little... No eyeliner, no mascara. I'm so sorry. And your daughter's scrunchy, but still, look and at my you. My daughter's scrunchy. Yeah. You're you're so hot. Really beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. But we have like a wild group today. We do. This is so much fun. In case you don't know who we are, I'm Anna Garcia, which is entirely possible. That is. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Dorothy Lucy. Uh, we have both done TV in Los Angeles for a long time, and as Anna likes to say, we come from the most superficial place on earth. So we like to do something that is a little less superficial every once in a while. As I finish putting on my lipstick. Well, you go ahead. So this is the Mending Kids Hour. And basically what we do is we talk about children's health issues around the world and here in the United States. Mm -hmm. And we talk about some of the wonderful mission work that Mending Kids does. It's a national nonprofit that works internationally, but we talk about everything, don't we? And we're going to talk about Haiti today. And we know that Haiti has issues with sewage. But first, if we can discuss the sewage issue that was a little closer to home this morning, your shower. Yes, I have a third world situation in my home right now downstairs. So Dorothy and I were on a conference call. And when you call. say downstairs, you... you... Uh, it's downstairs in every possible thought of downstairs. <laughs> Yes, I had sewage backing up into my downstairs shower, and we had a health crisis at my house this morning. But that was all taken care of, and yes. Can Mending Kids help you in any way? Yeah, well. <laughs> I have to turn this so I can look at you, because you're so cute. Am I cute today? Well, you have lipstick on. You today. haven't even said anything about my jewelry today, oh, or the oh, fact that I decorated this set in honor of our show on Haiti. Let me see your jewelry. Okay, well, no, not are this that. real? No, oh. yeah, they, they are. Well, that's when I used to make money. Um, <laughs> when you were employed. Okay. That's from Haiti. This is from Haiti. I bought that you with You knew that. With you Isabel. have this? You're kidding. I told her to get that one, not the other one. And I got this bracelet yes. in Haiti. Okay, and can, this, can, can we this just is say from Haiti. Second? Isn't this gorgeous? Wait, one second. I recommend say, that. The girl without any makeup on is Dr. Kathy Shin, who Hello. is a brilliant surgeon from Children's Hospital. Okay, continue about what you bought in Haiti. All right, so I'm the only one today who's going to talk about Haiti, who's been to Haiti that really went there for the most superficial purpose ever. A cruise. So, yes, and, I went on a cruise. <laughs> okay, she told me I'm going on a cruise with my family and I'm a little horrified because we're going to Haiti. I'm like, on a cruise? Well, here's why I was horrified. Not because we were going to Haiti, but because it's It was like, a cruise. It was a cruise. It was fancy. And I thought to myself, hold on a second. W you know, they've walled off this whole area, the most beautiful parts. In fact, Tony, I sent you a, a picture today of my cruise. And this is a picture of uh, Labardee, Haiti. <gasps> I've have been you been there? there? Yes, ma'am. So here's here was my problem. All right, wait, let me just say. Oh. We should introduce people, right? Oh, yeah, right. I'm sorry. I feel like everybody's here. Karen <laughs> Nevish, everybody is here, who is the missions director for Mending Kids and the heart and soul of Mending Kids. She's been to every corner of the world mending children. Okay, please continue. So here was my moral dilemma. We're going to Haiti. It's a secluded area on the island that is only for Royal Caribbean travelers and tourists, right? And on top of it, you can't visit the rest of Haiti. No. And so you can I, never see the real story. Or or really just sit and and talk with people. So I felt that they this, never want you to actually meet a Haitian. They don't. Mm. I mean, they have a shop there where they sell stuff from nonprofits, and that's where I bought this stunning vase. Isn't this great? It's paper mache. I love this. And now you have the same necklace. And you have the same necklace. It's horn. Yeah. I helped Isabel buy that. Wow. She wanted to buy another heart, and I said this would be better. I said, great. Yeah. Isabel but Isabel, Isabel, another one of our volunteers, was a huge heart. So huge. Not just that one. <laughs> so you all go to Haiti because you're doing surgery for children. But I, I felt conflicted. Is, is it all right to take this little part of Haiti, wall it off from the rest of what's really happening there, and do business there? I mean, I guess... There is some money going back to Haiti. It was just an odd way for me to have been well, to Haiti. Well, to me, that's the whole thing. Is there some money then going back to the Haitian people? 
I hope from so. your trip. Well, they've helped to build a school there, which I think is very important because I like questioned everyone on that cruise staff. It's she's like your what reporter. Are she's yes. an investigative reporter. I do the stupid stuff. Right. No, I will be doing like stupid I even stuff had to today. say that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, really, <laughs> so redundant. Anyway, anyway, enough about my vacation. The whole point of this conversation is about Haiti, and it's the access to health care. It's the access to education, which is why we have a fabulous guest. I hope everyone stays with us because who's going to be on the show, Dorothy? Okay, so I guess I wasn't supposed to say because... Oh, you talked, you told days ago on Twitter, you told everyone who was coming I know, but but Heidi, our, 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 our beautiful Mindy Kids human being, I guess you guys were tweeting, oh, can we can we reveal who it is? And I'm like, I'm sorry, I said three days ago Madeline Stowe was coming on to talk about... And Revenge, which you're a little obsessed with. I love that show. She is the star of Revenge. She plays Victoria Grayson. And she's getting her revenge this season. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh, I love that show. So, But she's going to talk a little bit about the show, just to please me, but she's also going to talk about Haiti because of the work she does in Haiti, and she goes there. With artists for peace and justice, and she's been there many times. Yes. So, Look, I feel like I'm the serious one today, and you're the goof-off. It's oh, weird. Oh, finally. You know, sometimes I want to be the pretty blonde in the room, Dorothy. <laughs> you, you can easily be. <laughs> <laughs> I almost didn't make it here today. I had to change. Like, I had to put on... Several other sets of undergarments because my shirt was a little see-through. And Anna knows I will wear shorts anywhere around the world. That inappropriate. I'll be inappropriate in, anywhere. Inappropriate in Muslim countries, Dorothy. But not a see-through shirt when we're talking about children. Okay, should we throw the video so people yes. know a little bit about what Many Kids does in Haiti? Yes. <laughs> It's incredible. They are working in some of the most challenging conditions that mending kids worked in, period. When you I've, say challenging, it's like, did you did you begin the work in Haiti before or after the earthquake? After. And oh. it was really tough getting into Haiti because we got in because of Madeline Stowe. And, oh, really? And Artists for Peace and Justice, yes. she. They were so sick of all the looky loo volunteers that just came to gawk mm -hmm. and not really just wanted to say they went there and it took some doing to get in past sister judy who is it run a t runs a tight hospital but she eventually allowed us in um we do dr father rick freshette and susie S susie dr judy they, um, it's okay that you know these people. It's They're fine. Like, oh. Susie, doctor, <laughs> father. Oh, Dr. Let, Seuss. Let the last. <laughs> yes. <laughs> to make a long story short, after their hesitation in having us come, it was mm -hmm. an all female team. Which is seven. so cool. That Ooh. is really cool. How many chicks yeah. did you take to Haiti with you? We had seven chicks. Yeah. Amazing. Was, and afterwards, D Sister Judy sent us an email saying, You have set a new high standard for medical missions and surgical teams for St. Damien and Haiti. And this is the only pediatric hospital in Haiti mm -hmm. that is running all the time. That's St. Damien. That's, That's correct. St. Damien Hospital. And I know you don't just let any volunteer go because Anna met Dr. Shen. Kathy. Yes. I asked to go. I begged to go. No, and they said, like, no, <laughs> you can't go. It was a closed mission uh, because of... There were a lot of political issues going on yeah. at the time. And I am controversial. <laughs> no, but if you're going, you need to be able to help in some way. Yeah, yeah. Or have help. a function. Hello. 
<laughs> she bought she bought the doctors in Cambodia M and M's. I did. I'll so feed you. when you got you. there, and I don't think it was this last trip, the trip before maybe. I heard you got there, and the first thing you guys did was go to a funeral. I mean, there are, are, do I? Am I overstating this that there are just bodies everywhere? There are bodies everywhere. Every Even morning. at church, mm-hmm. there's bodies. And uh, Father Rick was this wonderful man, and he believes that everyone deserves a burial. So people will leave dead bodies in front of the hospital, mm. knowing that their He'll loved one will have a proper He'll burial. take care of yeah. it. That's yes. why they do it. Exactly. Well, yeah. There's something because to that, Because they can't then. afford that. Let me ask you, Dr. Shin. Se- you can just call me Kathy. Kathy, Kathy with a C? Miss Garcia. Kathy with yeah. a C. <laughs> okay, Kathy. Set the stage for us of what it is like in Haiti, because the first time I met you, you were, you were standing on crutches, your leg was in a cast, and you were so impassioned about your experience and what you had done, you basically blew all the other doctors away. Did I really? You did. I was not aware because there's very no, attractive please. doctors there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. Right? My yeah. friend Dina and Selma. He's cute. So cute. I don't know but if she's, she's that the most cute. No. look how cute she is and, and she's gonna be the next Doctor Oz, but she's the most competitive person I've ever known. <laughs> <because> <laughs> Thank you, Tony. Other doctors have gone on missions and done maybe 30 kids, maybe 40 kids, which is amazing. We're talking about complex surgeries, but you need to blow them all away. How many, what's the most surgeries you've done? I think we broke our own record this last time. We did 89 89 procedures. procedures. And you're the only surgeon. I'm the only surgeon. She's the only surgeon. 89. this This is what, a little over a week. No, it's uh, five, five days. days. Oh my, how, how do you do that? I know. So this is this is the secret to all women. We have to multitask. We have to delegate. <laughs> what are you doing while you're doing surgery if you're or multitasking? I don't know. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm, I'm chatting with my daughter back in Los Angeles. I'm ordering stuff on Amazon. <laughs> right. You can get Wi-Fi? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Dorothy, we really should consider going if they'll yeah, have Yeah, we never go on a mission the where there's time Wi-Fi. The only time, the only area that has Wi-Fi is right in the operating room. So that's the place to be. Okay, so you're in the operating room. This operating room, is it in a hospital or are you out in the open? I thought you said you were you were in a tent. We lived in a tent, <laughs> but we operated in the operating room in a building. So in the hospital. Yeah. So we were air conditioning. Okay. And this time- In the operating room. In the operating room. And this time someone brought Bluetooth- speakers so we were jamming tunes <laughs> in both rooms while we had two female wonderful anesthesiologists yeah and one baby would go to sleep in one room the other one would wake up in the other room and there was boom boom thank you ma'am oh my god and yeah. she's complaining about her sewage here but i know the issue there is oh um, yeah we can't horrifying. use the toilet paper in yeah. the toilet yeah that was a little hard <laughs> not you can't do that in my house either apparently <laughs> exactly we can operate in your downstairs <laughs> so i would really. feel right at home so some people may want to in the chat room may want to ask you some medical questions i would so love we'll, to we'll answer all, all questions that you, you do all kinds of surgery what did you mostly do in haiti and can you tell us you know um you know dr ferry very well who was I here do. with us two weeks ago he's adorable he's by cute the way. I know, but he you're cuter cute. yeah Thank he you. he was saying you know when we get these kids they're half dead do you find that in Haiti? No, no, no. He does the hard ones. I do the easy ones. Oh, well, that's why you do so many. Exactly. Thank you. So all the kids <laughs> that come to see me are so beautiful and healthy. They just have one thing wrong with them. So they go to sleep under anesthesia. They wake up under anesthesia. I hate to toot my own horn, but we have the lowest complication rate. And that's why Sister Judy and at St. Damien's, they want us back every year yeah. because the nurses and the anesthesiologists and the support staff, we do such a great job. And honestly, we just do really simple cases, mostly inguinal hernias, Mm -hmm. hydroceles, and stuff like that. So where if you had your son come to Children's Hospital Los Angeles, I'd say you go to sleep, you wake up, all done, they have a little Band-Aid, and and you're out the door in an hour and a half, right? Mm -hmm. So those are the things that we do at uh, St. Damien's, and they just can't afford it. It yeah. isn't like a transplant surgery or open heart this or that. Yeah, it's but if they don't have this surgery, and how, then, uh, well, what's it like for them to live like that if you, they don't have this corrective surgery? What You're shaking your head, no, Karen. Quality of life yeah. is, I mean, very much uh, affected, depending on the t- if he's having a hernia or... So I tell my families all the time, oh, it's just a little bulge, but it's a loop of bowel that's sticking out. And if it gets twisted and can't come back in, mm. then it's dead mm-hmm. bowel. And then there's a bowel obstruction. Is that what a hernia pul- is? I don't exactly. know what a hernia, a hernia is. A hernia is like a little pocket in your abdominal cavity. I don't think I ever knew either. Yeah, so it's, I would draw you a picture, but it's like a little pocket. Do you, do you want We it? have cameras. I mean, oh, it's I like... <laughs> the, the, cameras, I'm not wearing the cameras I forgot to tell you Thank about. You. 
<laughs> but it's just a little pocket. Intestines will stick mm-hmm. out. And if it's a girl, a beautiful girl, an ovary can stick out, mm-hmm. twist, mm-hmm. and then nec- get necro- necrotic. Then their lives are at stake. And they can't call 911, yeah. right? They can't go to their local doctor to reduce it. So I feel like in my own way, I'm helping a lot of children prevent all those horrible things that could potentially happen in the future. You yeah. know, I read the statistic that 10% of all children before the age of five in Haiti die because mm-hmm. of a simple complication that can be corrected. And I, my guess is those statistics are much higher, but those are the statistics I was able mm. to find. You are amazing. I didn't even prompt you for that one, Anna. Yeah. Thank you. She's the real uh, reporter. I you am. Do. I can't help Thank myself. You, for you should take her to I'm Haiti. I'm the serious one. You are the serious now one. Now can I go to Haiti? <laughs> 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 She's the serious one until we start talking about revenge with Madeline Stowe. That's I right. can't. My husband is so excited. Is he? Yeah, Does he watch that show? No, but he loves Madeline oh, Stowe. Oh, she's so oh, gorgeous. He, just, he only watches it for her. So, Kathy, Sorry, can, can you tell us what the rest of Haiti is like? It's a beautiful, beautiful country. There is a beach. There are mountains, and there are mountains beyond mountains, to Mm -hmm. quote a famous book. (laughs) And where we go, we go right in the center of Port-au-Prince, where we see, um, the first year we went was a couple years after the earthquake, and the tent city was still there. Mm. The cathedral still in ruins. And now, I I have to tell you, this is my third year going back. So much amazing progress. It has. There is progress. Because that's been the criticism that mm-hmm. there hasn't been much progress, and it's also been the frustration for everyone living there, frankly. Right. So what's different? <clears throat> so they're building. You see cranes up. Mm-hmm. You see the morale of the ha- local Haitian people a little better than the year before. And I sat next to the ambassador's wife on the plane ride, plane ride Name back. Name dropper. Fancy. Go on, Just always. to let you know. Oh. And she was telling me that she feels like her husband is doing such good work there. Oh. And the, because of the American generosity... So the Haitians sometimes feel, and let's get a little political, they don't feel like the money is coming Mm because they don't see it fast enough. But I think with time, we're doing a great, great service to them and helping them out because they really do need the help. I'm excited. We've got a phone call. Who will our first phone call be from, Dorothy? Lucy, do you even know? I think it's, is it Dr. Arti? Dr. Zari. Oh, Dr. Zari. Dr. Zari Haddad? Yes. Yes. Are you there? Hello. Zari's gone. Oh, Zari's terrific. She got to go to Haiti because she speaks French. Uh-huh. She, she was helpful. Uh, yes. And she's a therapist, which yes. was helpful. Yes. But I don't think she's Did we lose therapist. her? All right, hopefully she'll okay. call back. Well, well, we'll keep talking then. So you've seen progress, which is important. Do you yes. feel safe in Haiti? Oh, good question. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for the pause, but uh, I have to pause because... It's always, uh, we were always, nev- we were never alone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We had a driver. We had s- some, a local person with us. And from one compound to the next po- compound, we mm-hmm. had an escort. But you know, when you don't have, and you're desperate, and you can't get anything, yeah. and your family is starving, you will this do is anything. a situation where you will do anything. I mean, I, I, I really, I'm not condoning this, no, but when you are absolute- desperate, and the people are desperate, they do desperate things do we to, have, to survive. Do we have Zara? You know what, Zara, you can probably talk about this. Yes. Um, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm here, but I, I, I just finished the session, and so I wasn't <laughs> listening on the radio. I don't know what the conversation has been yet. That's right. Nobody else was listening either, Zara. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we, I wish I could have listened. We were saying uh, that, that you uh, you being a therapist was just an extra bonus of you being a volunteer with yeah. Kathy. And being a translator, yeah. right? Yeah. Being both. Too. That was yeah. your purpose on the trip. And we were just talking about desperation, the desperation yeah. and the mm. situation in Haiti, because we asked uh, Dr. Kathy Shin, did she feel safe? And they had to have escorts everywhere. And I brought up the, you know, the notion that when you have such dire, such a dire situation, people do act in desperate ways. Can you, mm-hmm. can you express mm-hmm. to us what it was like for you there? Well, you know, Actually, people had warned me, are you crazy? It's not safe there. It wasn't safe before the earthquake. It can't be safe now, and and on and on and on. And part of what I experienced now, just simply as a person, never mind as a therapist, was that I felt differently. I did not experience fear in the same kind of way that I would experience here in the safety of Los Angeles, let's say. So your sense of threat and danger shifts where you're in a place that 
is in such need of you. Mm -hmm. That's uh, interesting. You You're too are, valuable for anyone to harm. <laughs> you they need you. You become what, what they need to feel safe. And, and in that context, uh, you do feel safe. I, I never felt uh, not safe. I would protect Zari with my life. So that was her <laughs> And she's got a scalpel heart. most of the time. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yes. And, I and know she knows how to, how to use, use it. it. <laughs> <laughs> Who was that? Kathy, is that you? Yes, hello, Zari. <laughs> oh, hi. Bonjour. <laughs> bonjour, bonjour. Um, how, how about the people there? Did, did you sense desperation, or is that a word we're using and we shouldn't be using? Yeah. Well, you know, first of all, uh, I, I, I'd like to um, contextualize this and say that I can't very honestly say that I was in Haiti because I really was in St. Damien. You know, hospital. we were at the hospital and we stayed at the hospital in terms of we lived there for a week. And mind you, the second year I was there, we'd go out to eat in the evening. Whereas the first year, we hardly even did that. Mm -hmm. So um, what I, I mean, I certainly saw the desperation of parents bringing their children in. And I was in awe of their dedication. You know, the last two, three days, we've been complaining so much about the heat mm -hmm. right here in L.A. Mm -hmm. These parents would come with their babies and little children and sit outside in the hopes of hope that we might see them. Yeah. They would take, I don't know how many little buses, you know, to get there, mm -hmm. and then uh, sit outside and then maybe make it inside the clinic where uh, we had a fan, no air conditioning, and etc. And the dedication of that, I see that as dedication more than desperation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, to your child. Right. That's, of course, I'm talking about the parents. Yeah. Um, but the thing at St. Damien's that impressed me was people's ability to trust in us and cooperate with mm -hmm. us. Because this was their hospital. And here we are, you know, in a sense, intruding on their turf. You know, because you're you're going to help, but you're right. You you are in essence intruding. Mm -hmm. Zari, is it true that you sang lullaby lullabies to the children in French? Oh. She has a lovely voice. <laughs> lovely voice. Yes, I did. You know, I, I was frankly um, not able to use the French as much as I was hoping I would, because as it turns out. The people who speak French are the ones who go to school or have mm. been educated. Mm -hmm. right. And, you know, only 60% of children go to school. That was the statistic, I think, two years ago when, when, we were there, when I was there. And so a lot of the children really just know Creole because that's what they hear at home. Mm -hmm. And so with those children, I would just unconsciously or maybe even consciously um, start humming a lullaby. Frère Jacques would be more familiar to them than Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, for example. <laughs> and I, I think I was right. Um, any particular no, child that you remember or have a thought mm -hmm. about? You know, actually, uh, I do. There, There are a handful of children that somehow um, stamped the moment for me. Mm -hmm. um, I can't necessarily say why exactly. Um, it was probably a co-creation of them and I in that particular moment. Um, and, and what I could contribute was very haphazard and random because my function wasn't as structured as any of the other people on the team. Yeah, you were a volunteer. Yeah. Exactly. Well, that's interesting, the whole point of the volunteerism. So, Dr. Kathy Shin, how important mm -hmm. is it when you are trying to do what you're trying to do to have these volunteers who sometimes don't feel that useful? She's essential. Mm. Are you passing notes to each other? What's going on over there? <laughs> you don't wanna, the you don't, volunteers are essential. You don't want us to know what, what's going on over here? No, no, no. I was just, she could tell you 
about Zari and uh, a new volunteer that went this year and how they were critical, both of them in their own way, to make. I want to hear about that and also just about how it's all women who always go on this trip. Mm. It's an all-female mm. team. We don't do it on mm. purpose, but I feel like the best doctors and nurses yeah. are just so happen to be women. Yes. Not to... <laughs> so sorry. Is this bad? Am I going to get in trouble? No. We're going to get letters? For those who don't know, Dr. Shin is very sarcastic. All I'm saying I is I think that. she meant that, though. <laughs> yes, that true. That's that true. too. So I feel like, you know, it's very unique. So as a guy, I don't come in there as the boy surgeon with all these the like, boy baggage exactly the boy baggage and expecting like all the girl nurses and lower people to like bow down Count to out. me Got yeah it. so i go there i clean the room in between t- so i can move the cases i pick up the baby afterwards and i move the baby i mm-hmm. put the ivs in i do everything although I, I heard you would not moving. put the suppository in a, a certain too. area i heard you didn't like yeah i heard no, someone else Karen did the suppository <laughs> i'm a professional <laughs> So's Karen. <laughs> <laughs> so, but we those those uh, volunteers essential, crucial because yeah. they mm-hmm. connect. Because I am I don't connect with the babies because they're asleep. I mean, mm-hmm. I say hi and I examine yeah. them, but then I move on to the next mm-hmm. one. Well, when do you connect with them? Oh, then? she's so not telling when the truth. At night, she oh, goes and softie. snuggles yeah. with them. Oh really? my gosh! Oh, yeah. So yeah. Madeline still, so hopefully, she'll come on and she'll tell you about the orphan room at St. Damien's. No. Oh, oh, oh. So I gotta tell you, oh. we, that's when we do our bonding because we're not mm. operating and the babies are not under anesthesia, but we just go mm. and play. I have lollipops in my pocket, and saving the world one lollipop at a time. Oh my gosh! My I should put phrase. that. I should put that on a T-shirt. That's my favorite phrase. Because those mm. orphans, they're there and no one visits them. So explain, tell us about yeah, that. Yeah, tell us about that. Karen, tell them about uh, St. Damien's. So St. Damien's is part of a larger organization that is in. Oh, and we're, wait, we're supposed to talk to somebody from St. Oh. Damien's. Is oh. that who's on the line? Who's on the line? Uh, hi, good afternoon. Uh, I'm Willie Willitra. Oh, hello, Willie. Willie. Oh, oh Willie. <laughs> that was applause. so loud. Okay, loud. yeah, the crowd's going crazy. We, we will get back to talking about the orphans because I was starting to tear up. But I want, I want Kathy to tell a little bit about you because she wanted to tell your story. So... Willie, I'm so glad you're here. Uh, Willie is an amazing young woman. She is Haitian, so her Creole is très bien, if you know what I mean. (laughs) And uh, she is now a fourth-year medical student at the University of Connecticut. And she left Haiti when she was young, partly because of the danger. I don't know how much Willie wants to say, but... She Not was so instrumental, <laughs> but but that's all. She and then uh, now she's in Connecticut. She's applying to general surgery, and she helped me in the clinic. And she so she's a medical student. Yes, fourth yeah. year medical student, wow. and a girl. Yeah, you know, go girls and go girl girls in surgery. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Yay! So, Willie, I how applied are you? yesterday. Oh, congratulations. I wrote her letter of recommendation. I hope it gets her in. And she, oh, God, I hope you do. I don't oh, know. Gosh, With Dr. Kathy Shin helping. <laughs> so, Willie, how are you? I'm doing great. Uh, I just left the case, actually, to do this. Oh, good. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. But, I'm familiar. I, I, okay. everyone. Okay. I, just, I just need to say goodbye. Oh, hold on. Zari needs to say goodbye. Right. Goodbye, yes. Zari. Oh, goodbye, thank thank everyone. Au revoir. Au bientôt. Zari okay, probably has another Zari. case. And, and Willie, who, who did you leave there? Probably on the operating table. <laughs> Is everything going to be Me? okay? <laughs> yes, Willie. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, he, they're, they're in good hands. I mean, okay. There's a resident there, two residents there, and the surgeon's also there, obviously. <laughs> so how was it for you being from Haiti to go back there in this capacity? It was an incredible experience. There is. I don't think there is any other way I'd rather be back to Haiti than go back and serve and be useful and using what I love and what I studied to help. So it was great. On my way back, I was crying like a baby. <laughs> it was a great experience. There's no there's no other way I'd rather be back home in Haiti than to go back and volunteer and seeing patients. And how old were you so. when you left? I was 15 years old oh, when so, I left. So you, you it have... was sort of unexpected, uh, but yeah, I was 15 years old. So how is it better or, or possibly worse than when you were growing up? In Haiti? Mm-hmm. I think it's better. When I left, it was in 2004, 
It was right after the last, uh, the, the president, President Aristide left. Mm-hmm. So things were not, I mean, I went back to, we went back to Haiti and there were people in Shen, Shen Moss at 9, 10 p.m. And when I was there, that was unheard of. 9, 10 p.m., Shen Moss, the main, the main uh, public uh, place in Haiti, public park in Haiti would have been empty at that time. So I think there's, gonna, there's lots of progress. So, the, the the airport has completely changed. It's it's so lively. There's just this sense of hope back in the country now. Oh, that's, that, that's how I feel about it. Everyone is just kind of hopeful and looking forward to the future. When I left, it was just a sense of despair. Even though it was before the earthquake, just everything just felt bad. But now it looks different, and I'm very happy. I can't wait to go back. Oh, that's oh. wonderful. A- Anna, to your point about volunteers coming on the trip, she wanted to come last year, and she tried so hard to get in on the trip, but that's when yeah. it was still closed, and we weren't able to bring her. So she was persistent, yes. <laughs> and, we, okay. and we found, and she was an incredible asset to the team. So and now, because we, she also speaks Creole. Well, yes. So, and then, I, I'm curious, Willie, how... How was that for you while you were, you're telling someone else's story in real time and you're just the conveyor mm-hmm. of information, yet for you emotionally, there's a lot going on there. What was all of that like? I, I mean, I, it was great. It was great for me to be in that capacity because I know a lot of people speak French and a lot of people speak different Creole, but being from Haiti, there's some there's an element of the culture that I can also explain to uh, that's to Dr. Lily or Dr. Shen. Um, there, at the time, it was rough. There's one particular patient who definitely had an effect on me. I, I almost cried, and we had to take a moment for me to regroup, and I love that. So at times, it was hard because these are the conditions. This is what I left. These were the situations that I escaped. Like these, Some of these patients could have been me. Some of these patients could have been my... My cousins. Some of these patients were my cousins at one point. Were you crying? So at the time, mean, it was but, a little bit rough. But why were you, you were crying because you felt torn, like because you had managed to get out? Was that, did you deal with those feelings as well? Well, that was, it, this, was, this only happened one time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mind you, there was one patient that was really rough on me because we couldn't help because we, we weren't equipped for that. Oh. Um, that is the hardest thing you will ever like face Maybe I didn't kids. explain things well enough and... Oh. And yeah, that's hard. So, so, I don't know. Sometimes there are but, kids uh, that we we cannot help, and I don't think that's a part we like to talk about. But it sometimes is, we it can't. Is, it is the hardest part of this being in mending kids. It, this was probably a huge learning experience for me um, at that time. Yeah, but, I was yeah thinking, that was the only time. You know, we, we do. We try and help every kid who comes to us. We try and help the sickest of the sick and the poorest of the poor. But there are certain, I mean, there are only certain surgeries that you can do while you're there. Absolutely. Yeah, and the good thing is we got this, uh, this particular child. Uh, I've been in contact with one person back in Haiti, and they're taking care of them. So Look at you. Yeah. She's moving yeah. all the way from Connecticut. I love that. Yeah. We love that. What did, about what, you. what did you write on her recommendation? I hope it was really good. Oh my gosh. Oh, I God. said that she was the moon and the stars. So oh. Does that help in being a doctor? <laughs> yeah, my my letters of recommendations are not very professional. They're uh-huh. very touchy feely. Kinda like you. Kinda. Yeah. I saw in the chat room somebody said that you were fun. I was very fun. I am still fun. And at the very end, I give out my cell phone number and I'm like, whoever reads this letter, I can't recommend Willie enough. So call me on my cell. So hopefully they'll call me. Yes, they did say that. Yes. Uh, Willie, you're going to be a great doctor. Absolutely. Dr. Shin was amazing in teaching me. I mean, I'm in my, my surgery sub internship now, and it was very helpful spending that one week in Haiti and spending those two, three days in New York. And remembering, like, how to suture and tie and things like that. And how to hold a bovi, which I was complimented on multiple times. Did so, she make you, put, was... make you put any suppositories in? Uh... No, I guess no, she... that did... <laughs> <laughs> That's Karen's job. Everyone knows that. <laughs> but, you know, part of what Mending Kids does when we're on the road is teach. So Absolutely. I'm, I'm yeah. glad that. So were you able to teach the doctors there in Haiti, or are there just not enough in Haiti? The situation just doesn't apply. No, it doesn't apply. Yeah. yeah. No, it's not. Because no. no. that's part of the I mission. I mean, there were yeah. some interactions with uh, Dr. Lily and the pharmacist 
for instance, we were telling them these are the medications we use in the state. And they're saying, you know, we don't have these medications. And we're explaining, like, why we don't use, for instance, salmeterol on kids. And it, so the, it was a learning experience for the, for the both of us at that point because they're telling us we don't have albuterol in Haiti. We're saying we don't use whatever medication you have there. We don't use it in the States because of these and these side effects. It was, uh, it was definitely like a two-way thing. Often, you know, we, we bring, uh, that, that that's Karn's job. It brings everything. <laughs> but what's more, what she's saying is really the heart of a mission is it's an exchange of knowledge. Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes they learn because we have everything at our disposal, so we expect certain things. And then we learn they do with much less. And so our doctors come back learning you know how to do things differently or more efficiently it's an exchange of knowledge when they do get to participate mm -hmm. with a be it a pharmacist or a physician or a nurse or whatever see that's why i say you are the heart of many kids because i've i've been on several missions with you and you don't enter a country or an operating room with the this is how we're doing it you walk in yeah. and say, we want to help. We're here to serve. You can't serve and judge at the same time. Yeah. It's not possible. Yeah. So, so tell me a little bit about the orphan room, because you guys were starting to talk about that. Okay. No, I'm sorry, what? Uh, we're going to start talking about the orphan room, where we, but we want to, unless you want to add something before you go, Willie, we know you've got to get back to oh, school. Oh, no, no. I, I do have to get back, but I, mean, I just want to say this was a great program, both. As a student, as someone who's from Haiti, as a volunteer, I think this is an incredible opportunity for personal level, professional level, learning level, whatever you want to call it. And I mean, I'd be happy to recommend anyone to participate, and I'd be happy to come back. We miss so. you. See you next time. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you, you back, Willie. Right? You go back every year. Absolutely. Okay. No. Okay, so the orphan room. So the orphan room, Karen and I have been there, and Madeline has been there, if I can call her Madeline. Do I call her Madeline still? Miss Doe? Is Madeline. this in the book by yes, any chance? Do we, we have a book, by the way. We have show and tell here. This is a great book, by the way, that Mending Kids has put together about the missions to Haiti, which they also use to fundraise and help support these missions. So you want to find Absolutely. the picture in the book? I can, oh, you'll do it. Karen, do you it. find the picture. And, and if, you, and Dr. Shin, talk. keep talking. So one of, my, one of our cry. nurses, Caitlin... <laughs> Uh, wants uh, wants a baby really badly. Hasn't found Mr. Wright yet. Mm -hmm. It's hard to find Mr. Wright in Los Angeles. Yeah. But Haiti and L.A. are a lot alike in this thing. <laughs> exactly, right? <laughs> you understand me? Yeah. So, but Caitlin really wants a baby, and I keep on telling her, just go find someone and get Caitlin. pregnant, right? Yeah. But she doesn't want to do that. But she loves holding babies. So we would go to the orphan room after we do it all day of operating, and we, there would be just lovely children just there. And oh. there's only one nurse in that room. And there were like... One Nurse. nurse for how she many can, children they're probably like 11 or 12 and each one of them needs to be held well you know everyone needs to be held yeah. right mm -hmm. and they're there all by themselves this is caitlin Aww. and this is caitlin oh look at that this is so bad but we were um let's some tell her about Tasha and taking the so baby home <laughs> we were thinking about taking this one home which is kind of illegal, but we thought... Well, there are channels, there are ways of doing right, this. Right, right. And then as we were, <laughs> we would just take him all around the hospital, and then Miss Sister Judy would come up and say, yeah, you can't do what you're thinking right now. <laughs> okay, but why not? This is an orphan. That's how we're thinking, but she has supply. Yeah. So her, her application is in process. Is it you're really? kidding, no. really? Yes. And then For this like, baby? No, that one was actually went someplace else. Oh, but that France. baby found but a home. But this baby yeah. has a home. Yeah. Oh, we love that yeah. happy Oh, my endings. God. You, when you start to talk about kids, you do that high pitch. Oh, my God. I, do. I get very excited with babies. Oh. The whole time we were in Cambodia, I said to her. And monks. Oh, yeah, that's a story we must I tell. Do. I said, can you say it's a baby boy? It's and she can, boy. she cannot say. <laughs> she can't say it like a normal human being. She it's cannot say so it's cute. a baby boy. I love all these pictures. I mean, they're just so joyful. I think this is what I love so much about mending kids and this kind of work. It's because we're talking about things that are dire and they're horrible and they're sad. Yet I there's some joy there. I find so much joy in the hope. Yeah, you know, and Absolutely. I choose to live in the hope and the joy. I choose to live. But in there. I think people approach charity as it's something very heavy right. and self-righteous and you know the flies buzzing around children because we've right. seen that image so many times i think the way we approach it and certainly the way you two approach it is what Fun. the hell let's just let's just 
do yeah. something. Just right. do it. Karin just and I would it. just hold hands and just jump right in. Yeah. Let's yeah. just get wet. Just yeah. jump right in. But okay, so tell me about some moments between the two of you because I know I know it's not easy. So you know, tell the truth of what a mission is really like. We've been on a mission uh, with Karin, so we know it's oh not my easy. Gosh. <laughs> wait, the t- wait, the time when we were s- above the o- OR and we were in essentially a ward with no. Air conditioning, no fans. No, no toilet, th- I've heard at no, yeah. some point. Yeah. We had and a toilet, just no toilet paper. Okay. Yeah. Oh, and the water in the shower with a pipe of cold water sticking out. Right. That might feel good, though, when it's so hot. But, totally. Yeah. But if you can get along with everybody yeah. and maintain And you're together all the time. We're s- essentially s- a uh, we're uh, family. Yeah, you're we're living family. together. We're a family. Yeah. And, it, and we bond. And there's so many mo- You have to, like... Stop yourself from crying all the time. It's yeah. a little bit like a girl's dorm because at this last one, we all shared a bathroom. There are six of us. And so one would be in the shower, and there would be a shower curtain, right? And then the other one's brushing her teeth. And then I am pooping on the toilet. <laughs> all three of us in the bathroom together. That is the only because place I gotta go where I, gotta I go. draw the line. And I'll do anything on a mission. I'll I have anything shared for a room with kids. you, but I will right? not poop with I, you in the room. My husband I mean, I'm has, drawing the line. My husband has never, has never seen that. No and one I, will ever see that. And on top of all that, I'm reading while I'm pooping. <laughs> <laughs> what are you reading? What are you reading? Us Magazine? A medical journal? No. Yeah, it's probably what? people. No, because uh, Father Rick sings and um, he has an amazing voice so someone wrote down oh, and easy. made it into a book his hymns oh. in creole and there's a translation the music is amazing i don't know the website but it's out there but dr i mean like father rick has an amazing voice he sang with Bo- uh, bocelli oh, oh don't bring up bocelli with her Sorry. she she tried to steal his baby i did not she I tried to not. steal the baby bocelli the baby, baby bocelli is so cute we his sat is gorgeous. oh my god so is the nanny we i met mean the nanny. <laughs> we were sitting with the nanny at an event blind Yes. Right? Okay. Yeah. We digress. Back okay. to Haiti. So, <laughs> Father Rick. Father but, Rick. But the baby Bocelli is voice. beautiful. Yeah. Father Rick has an amazing voice. And so he has a little booklet. So you can sing along with him because I have an amazing voice. You do? I do. Go, Go for it. So at we didn't church, make Zari wanna, sing. Go ahead. So, Go ahead. in church, I want to sing, but I don't know the words. But I have this pamphlet. So, yeah. I'm in the toilet and I'm bathroom <laughs> and I'm practicing the songs. There's one of the nurses is in the shower and the other one's brushing her teeth. And you're singing on the toilet. I'm singing on the toilet. Can she sing? Oh, she's got a great voice. I can really? belt it out. She can sing and she can uh, poop. Car and yeah. can <laughs> simultaneously. Remember, she's a multitasker. I'm Clearly, a multitasker. you're not going to sing. Oh no, I don't. Ha- I but haven't prepared because I don't have any eyeliner on. Okay, yeah, we noticed them. Next show because we intend Next to make show you. For sure. you. You're I'll our Doctor Oz, baby. I'll practice with you guys. Totally. You're our Doctor Oz. I'll do it. Oh, is that what it is? <laughs> it sounds like church. You know what, kind though? Like. That is, if I can talk about one special moment, is every Something morning more special than at the 7 a.m., okay. Dr. Rick and Sister Judy and the staff have a mass. Mm-hmm. And that's where they bring the patients who have passed away the night mm-hmm. before. Oh. And they are in the middle of the room. And it's one of, it, you don't have to be Catholic or whatever. If just you, human. If you're there and you experience that human humanity, the dignity that he's giving to these people who no one cares, c- about. cares about, it's if you're not moved or changed by that experience, then <laughs> then not, you never will be. But the best part is the Jordanian uh, UN is next door. Yes. And during the mass, while he's singing in Creole with the dead bodies on the floor, you hear the Jordanians call for prayer. Yeah. Oh, so it's so beautiful in the morning, isn't it? Isn't it's it gorgeous? So, yes. I love so that as call. Because I'm Episcopalian, and I believe in God, but having a Catholic priest mm-hmm. with a dead couple dead bodies mm. with the Jordanian call to prayer, mm-hmm. phenomenal. It says it all. It says it all about what's happening in Haiti and who the people are and everything about it, the diversity and the beauty at once. Absolutely. Speaking of phenomenal, do we have Madeline? Hi. 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 I can hear you. My husband loves you. (laughs) I love her. (laughs) That's Dr. Kathy Shin, whose husband loves you. And you two need to know each other because you've both done such great work in Haiti. They've never met? I saw you from a distance we, at the gala, and I didn't was too afraid to say hello. Oh, stop. <laughs> Madeline <laughs> is the reason that we got to go to Haiti. Madeline, how did you get many kids into Haiti? 
Well, I mean, I you know, it's so funny. <laughs> it, it, it's, I, I never thought about it that way because what happened, uh, you know, we've been doing work with this astonishing organization that has a, a minuscule overhead, and they basically serve 400,000 people um, annually be, between health care, providing clean water, uh, a beautiful pediatric hospital uh, called St. Damien's. And um, I'm in, uh, on the board of Artists for Peace and Justice, mm-hmm. and we were founded by... Uh, filmmaker Paul Haggis, and there are all these wonderful actors who, um, you know, we, we came together to support the efforts of a man who is a, a doctor and a Catholic priest, uh, Father Richard Frechette, and he works in the m- most difficult areas of Haiti. And then the quake happened. Mm. We've been involved for two years prior to the quake. The quake happened, and everything was chaotic. And... Um, there were some very severe cases. I mean, we were de- they were dealing with a situation where they couldn't even um, obtain uh, morphine, you know, and and people, were, children were being amputated, mm. uh, adults were being, you know, it, it was just horrific. And um, there were some very complex surgeries because the hospitals were inundated, and uh, there were a couple of children who had um, multiple issues due to injuries. And when I called around Los Angeles. Uh, some top doctors from um, uh, UCLA, from USC, they all said, call Mending Kids. Mm-hmm. This is a remarkable organization, um, and, um, you know, they can help get visas in line if they decide to take these cases, and they were gracious enough to, to do this. And in a couple of these situations, uh, two, two little girls required multiple surgeries. Um, over the course of a, a good bit of time, so they they, they screen families, uh, you know, kind of hosting families very very carefully. These families become uh, dedicated to to these children, and making sure that they you know uh, provide a, a comforting background. So they were so impressive about the way they handle things and making sure that all the visas were taken care of properly. And I was dealing with the State Department. Uh, with them, and and uh, Marshall was incredibly organized, um, and a collaboration developed, and they came down um, and said, "Look, we'd like to do further help and do some general surgeries in Haiti," and and came down. I think the last mission was how many kids? Was it seventy-five 70? children, eighty-nine percent? Seventy. Yeah, yeah, it was like fifty seventy-five, right? right? She's very proud of so, that number. It's a great number. Are you kidding? It's a great number, and 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 the need is so it's it's so strong um, because you're basically dealing with a country that has no infrastructure. Yeah. It's quite chaotic still. Um, you know, there are a couple of good facilities. Uh, St. Damien's is probably one of the best, um, but they can't have a general surgeon all the time, and so many kids, you know, really came in and took care of these these issues that that are nagging and, and can develop into more um, difficult problems. And, uh, you know, we, we're very, very fortunate to have this collaboration. So I know you've been there several times. Just uh, tell us, what what is your Haiti? Describe your Haiti for us. Well, it's a very complex, uh, very complex Haiti. I, um, you know, I, I, I've been, I, I go multiple times each year. So, um, you know, through Waters for Peace and Justice, and uh, I have some very close, strong relationships with uh, Father Rick's. But Father Rick is the only man, a white, the only white person in a position of authority in the organization. It's entirely Haitian-led and run, and so we serve at their pleasure. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I have dear, dear friends who have grown up through kind of the system that he's developed, you know, who are committed to um, making their country a much better place. And some of them go on, have actually come, go on, gone on to become radiologists, um, you know, uh, dental technicians. Uh, you know, they're, he really, really focuses on education. And um, it's a thing where you see, you know, life and death are very closely uh, aligned with one another. Mm-hmm. You'll see really vibrant, uh, extraordinarily warm people, and then you'll see moments of, of, of difficulty and violence, you know, the next second. And, and these things all roll within minutes of one another. So it's a complex place, and it's not one that you easily shake, you know, because there's so much work to be done, and many kids have been 
um, really quite astonishing in their commitment to go, you know, uh, each year to do this. Madeline, you believe that your work in Haiti, though, is is tied directly to making sure that the children are educated, because if there's going to be a way out, education is going to be the way. And you have a school there. We, yes, we do. Education is and, and work training. These are these are two things that are very important. But more than that, um, uh, the organization that we're supporting provides, um, for instance, we have people who are being trained to install solar panels. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a pasta making factory. We, you know, uh, a mechanic uh, school. our school. The, I'm sorry. A mechanic school for repairing. A cars? mechanic school. We we build our own um, uh, blocks to to uh, create structures. So uh, it, it's very. This is what Father Rick has managed to do. He's incredibly ingenious, and he's able to do this and go into areas, for instance, where do, uh, uh, Doctors Without Borders has had to pull out. Um, they put up one hundred homes. Why? In, why, why would they have had to pull out? Because it was quite frankly just too dangerous uh, in, in those areas. They didn't have and, an all-girls team. <laughs> Did you yeah, hear that, Madeline? An all-girls team. <laughs> that, That's and, correct. And, and I will say, we're, we're, our, our, we make sure that 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 uh, the men and kids team is well protected, and and they stay pretty much on that that forty-two acre compound. Um, that's outside of the, the more difficult areas. So for you, but what, it, it just. Oh, I'm so sorry. Go Keep going. You know, what we did, Artists for Peace and Justice, uh, really, the, I think, was the kind of big achievement um, uh, that was accomplished. The father would believe that there needed to be a secondary school uh, that was free. Um, because in Haiti, essentially, you can have a free secondary school, but having to pay for the books will just wipe a family out. Yeah. You know, books and materials. So uh, we built this beautiful school. It's We have 2,700 kids, wow. uh, grades Seven through eleven, we're about to have the twelfth grade in the coming year. We will have three thousand children, and it's it's gorgeous. When people see it, they just light up because there really isn't anything quite like it, um, to our That's knowledge, amazing. anyway. Mm-hmm. It's gorgeous. And, we, and these are people from the U.S. government who've looked at it every day. Mm-hmm. So, for you, this is probably really putting you on the spot, but is there sort of a best mm-hmm. and a worst moment that that come to mind that sort of sum up your experiences there? Well, I mean, there's, uh, how can I say, when, when you first go there, you can't, when you're really out and about, you can't, you don't really absorb it all in one, in one draft. You can't you know process it, can you? You can't process you, you, you all You can't that process once. it. It isn't until you come home to you that you realize what's gone on. And, and sometimes you weep, and, but there's this ache to go back, you know? Mm-hmm. And because the fellowship is so strong, the, the bonding with these people have a common goal. And I want to be, also be very clear that this particular, you know, Mending Kids has been extraordinarily helpful. Um, but, you know, St. Damien's and, and the adjacent St. Luke's adult, adult Hospital, they bring in uh, doctors from around the world. The Mayo Clinic has helped. Um, and, um, you know, Mending Kids has done very, very specific work. Uh, as well with you know from with, with this with this great awesome male team. And you, but I, 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 I'm sorry, I, I had a very sick father, you know, so there was a real feeling of helplessness I had around it. it you know, he had a, a really one of the worst cases of MS you could ever have, oh. and you know, so on the one hand you get toughened from that, and on the other hand you're still left wrestling with the feeling that. Um, that you were helpless to do anything. And I think my draw to all of this is, has really been a way to kind of heal that for me, you know, because I, I couldn't do anything. And, and this is something, this participating and, and asking what these people need and what they want and trying to find a means to provide that um, means everything. And Mending Kids was so willing to jump in uh, has been really kind of a, it's something that we've all been really proud of, and 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 it shows really the goodness of the human heart. You know, they're they're great people. And you've really been there for us, and and this is what Anna's waiting for the segue because you brought the entire cast of Revenge to our <laughs> poker event. The entire <laughs> cast. It was such came. a fun night. <laughs> <laughs> How Mar- Marcel Marcel Sellers is always finding all these kind of creative, fun events to have, and, and, and that was a great night, and they all came back. Like, how did you get everybody and... to come? Because everyone was there. You, well, must not... have, you must have threatened them in some way. <laughs> Nothing no, says charity like a poker game. 
<laughs> no, no, no. I mean, Marcel is, is a genius in terms of how she she, she creates these, these events and and her team is, and it's like. Okay, Haiti and kids and free surgery. Poker, That's no and poker. Yeah. yeah, hello. And poker. Yeah, hello. Jodie Foster and, and Robert Downey. Yeah, it was a fun you know, and, and Sean Penn and Mel. And, you know, why not? And what a crazy team. As much as I love revenge, Anna, who is normally such a serious human being, Anna Garcia, is obsessed. So I I'm going to let her ask a couple of questions. Madeline, I am so <laughs> obsessed that last night on my DVR, I replayed the season finale. So Again. I would be so Ugh. ready for you today because I just, it was such a cliffhanger. Okay. That's how you prep for Haiti. You watch. I do. Okay. But that's how I prep okay, for this then. show, watching your season finale. All right. So everyone, if you watch Revenge, Madeline Stowe plays the one and only Victoria Grace. Okay, when does the season launch? Tell us what's going to happen. Does Victoria Grayson get out of the institution? Oh, that's right. When we left you, you yes. were in the crazy house. You were with your well, hands co- shackled. Of course she gets out of the institution. <laughs> and I just can't tell you when. But um, here's, here's the basic. I can't. There's so much going on. <laughs> um, I can't give. I, I'm obviously, you know, they'll, they'll chop off my head if I tell you what's happening. Nobody's listening. Um, it's but, all right. It's but, just but, us. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Essentially, there's going to be a little bit of a role reversal. Ooh, and, uh, okay. uh, Victoria now is so enraged uh, and bereaved that she's going to find every way she can to exact revenge on, on um, Emily, and she does it psychologically. Ooh. And, and now uh, we, and, and, and Emily's and, dad, and without, right? Without, I'm sorry? And Emily's dad. David Clark is alive. He's a very, very big part of how she's mm. going to exactly. Okay, this is sad, but I got chills when you said David Clark was alive. That is really sad. <laughs> <laughs> After the conversation we've had today, that's when I get chills. I'm, I'm very upset with myself. This is L.A., you know? <laughs> how well, about the thing the- that's interesting about him after everything that happened... Um, you know, it's, it's, it's an interesting story because Emily re- remembers him from the prism of being a child, right? So yes. we all love our parents. Mm. And Victoria remembers him a little bit differently. Wasn't he her and, lover? Uh, and, and this might be sort of the beginning of a, another larger mystery. And when he comes back, mm. he is not That's the good. person yeah. that, um, because of everything he's been through. And maybe something more, he may not be the person Emily ever thought he, he was. And the clothes, you know, everybody talks about scandal, and I do love those clothes. But your clothes, oh my I think, God, win. Victoria Grayson oh God. is like rocking it in every shot. It's every shot is tailored. Gorgeous. I'm actually so thrilled because I'm not having to wear tight dresses for for a little bit. So um, but, you're in a uh, hospital uh, gown, but, right? <laughs> And the, and the hospital that was such a relief and, and, and getting to wear jeans such a relief but um i can't say too much more and then and you know they they're always going to make victoria victoria well i love that as as evil as you are and as evil mm-hmm. as everyone on the show seems to be it's just the nicest group of people in the universe i mean really you guys hang out you play poker together for charity i mean it's a really nice group they're really good people, and um, it's a, we have more people come on to the show who are, you know, who, who are guest performers uh, who say it's not like that. On you know, it, 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 it's a really good work environment, and and I think that people are grateful and happy to be there. You know, but furthermore, I mean, as as wild as the story is, and entertaining and amusing, and you know, sometimes kind of frustrating, and it, it's it allows us. To, well, allows me to do this other kind of work, which mm-hmm. really brings right. uh, deeper meaning to the, you know, to my life, and that's really important. And um, you know, know we all get there when we get there. You're right? such a beautiful human being. I don't know how you go to bitchy so fast on the show, but I guess that is acting. <laughs> Because you are the biggest bee on TV, without a question. <laughs> she, is. she is, and 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 she is relentless. So, uh, so, so I think Dr. Shin. I think if we're if we're doing um, TV, Grace Anatomy, you're Arizona Robbins. I think, except for the lesbian stuff. I mean, right. you're the the Can pediatric. I just say, Madeline won the I, you know, have, Keck I've School of Medicine of USC Ma- Humanitarian Award. That's so awesome. Doc, Doc, can we call her Dr. Madeline then? I think that's yeah. fantastic. You got some fancy award. You who's never seen Grey's Anatomy. She, she won the USC Humanitarian Award. You got a humanitarian award, oh, Madeline. I oh yeah, I did. Yeah. Well, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. And, that little thing. Wait, wait, I should say I won one Dr. too. Um, Dr. Henri Ford. Uh, who, that's who my boss. The, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> he's very a, a wonderful man, and he's a Haitian, and uh, he went down to do an incredible amount of work. Uh, and he's actually trying to start the first national trauma hospital um, in Haiti, and it's extraordinarily challenging, as you know. Um, and we all hope it works, you know, because he's a he's a big, tough, willful man, charismatic, wonderful, smart as can be. I think a Princeton graduate. Went to Harvard Medical. And Harvard Medical School. Um, yeah, and he's been very supportive of as well of um, of many kids in St. Amy's. We're almost out of time. If nothing else, we got the two of you together. Dr. Kathy Shin got to sort of no, meet I can't Madeline. Wait to meet you. Maybe you guys will go to Haiti no, together. Likewise. <laughs> but, likewise. But, okay, last thing, really quickly, is there anything people can do? People who are, who are listening, people who are in the chat room. You know, I mean, we're telling all these lofty stories of you and surgery and Madeline, what you do. But what can somebody who's sitting at home? What can they do? Can they help Haiti in some way? Well, there are many ways to do it. Here's here's my personal philosophy, okay? And 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 I'm not here to. I think what happens is that people have a tendency because we've been um, almost trained from a very young age to give to these large agencies like the Red Cross, mm-hmm. um, you know, really really big named. Um, uh, yeah, because yeah, that's these yeah. agencies. Unfortunately, with these agencies, is that their overhead is massive, mm-hmm. just incredibly enormous. Uh, Marshall runs a very tight ship. Uh, her overhead is very small. Um, our overhead is, you know, artists for peace and justice. We are. We, it is paid for by angel donors. So, 100% of every dollar that you send in goes to the work on the ground. Um, for, again, Father Rick's uh, St. Luke's organization, minuscule overhead. So whatever you do, wh- wherever you want to give, really, really check out the financials. There should be some d- disclosure. And make I'm really sure that cheap. I are... use one suture for the whole case. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm really I'm cheap. I use one suture for the whole case. So it's not very well, expensive to do a mission that... trip. There you go. It, it, it's so you know. Find what what means something to you, but make sure that you know where that money is going. You yeah, know? I mean, you eighty nine And, and unfortunately, in the large organizations like Red Cross have very little in, in the case of Haiti to show for what they've done. Okay. So and we're going to link. I'm being really honest there. Yeah, I'm we're going to link. We're going to link on uh, the Mending Kids website. We're going to link to your website. We're going to have more information on Haiti for people who do want to help. You've heard about some great organizations today, so we've certainly given viewers and listeners some options and you about. want to know when revenge is back is it sunday uh the dvr it, is, it is set. the last sunday of this month is that oh, okay. the 28th or the 30th i'm not sure some, somewhere in there and madeline's I coming to my house to watch oh, we're God. gonna watch it at my house madeline's will, coming will you over please let kathy shin come over <laughs> all right all right Her husband. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll have some drinks and have a good time oh, I like be good. <laughs> you are a beautiful human being in so many ways no madeline. Stop, thank you stop. you it's are a speak to you Thanks, oh, guys. Thank you. You're thank just you. so gracious. Yeah, thank you. How cute is she? Adorable. Wow. You're what a love. fun show. You're in, you're in Girl Crush. I totally am. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Thanks, Dr. Oz. Okay, I think we're just about done, right? I think so. Wasn't okay. that fun, Dorothy? That was a great show. And I think we actually, surprising for us, especially me, we got some good information out there. I think we did. I in spite did. of ourselves, you yes. mean? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, that's right. it for the Many Kids Hour. We'll see you back here in a week or so. Uh. Two weeks. Two weeks. All right. Well, you're really going to have to wait for us A week or so, like two weeks. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) Bye, everyone. Bye. In the future, talk radio will actually educate, inspire, and make you think. The future is now. Topics and music that affect your life. From Universal Broadcasting Network. Tune in at UBNRadio.com.